Number 109. Draw the Lewis electron dot structures for these molecules and include resident structures where appropriate. Okay, so we just have to basically draw the Lewis structure for CS3 2 minus, and if there are any resonance structures, we got to draw them as well. Now, before we even deal with the resonance structures, the first thing we have to do is draw the electron structure, right? Electron dot structure just basically means that we just have to draw the lone electrons, the dots, and the bonds. So let's just start drawing it out, right? Let's draw the Lewis electron dot structure for CS3 2 minus. Now, in general, remember the least electronegative element is always in the middle. Between carbon and sulfur, carbon is less electronegative. So that means that the carbon will be in the middle, surrounded by the three sulfurs. So maybe I'll do one, and I guess we'll do one, two, three. That's good enough. Maybe I'll bring this a little down. Okay. So now let's start making our dots. Carbon is in group four or 4A or 14 on the periodic table. So it's got four dots, one, two, three, and four. And each sulfur is in group 6A or 16 on the periodic table. So the lucky number is six. So each sulfur will have six electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll do one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now this two minus charge, this means that the uh, molecule has gained two electrons. Remember, if you're more negative, you are gaining electrons because electrons are negative. You're never touching the protons. A positive charge means that you lost electrons. A negative charge means that you just gained more. So you just try to be fair. Whenever you're gaining your electrons, the more electronegative element will have a higher probability um, we'll say more electronegative element, we'll have a higher probability of gaining those electrons. So the sulfur are the more electronegative elements. So I'm just going to be fair and maybe I'll put one dot on one of the sulfurs and another dot on the other sulfur. And now always dot to dot single bonded up, right? So dot to dot always do single bonds first and then come back around and see if you need the double bond. So we'll do single, single, single. Okay, cool. And now check your outer elements. If any of your outer elements have the octet rule, you're good. So for example, for this one, this sulfur has two, four, six, eight electrons. I'm not going to touch anything about this. Same thing with this one, two, four, six, and eight. But if I look at this sulfur, it has two, four, six, and seven. It's looking at this electron, it's like, can we please share? And the carbon says, most certainly we can share. So another bond. And now the sulfur is all happy, two, four, six, eight. And the carbon is also happy as well, two, four, six, eight. Everybody's got the octet. So this is the electron dot structure. But since we have a charge, I do have to draw brackets there we go. And just put the charge in the upper right hand corner. So whether you want to say two minus or minus two, it doesn't really matter. So now here comes the resonance. The resonance, a resonance structure basically means it's a different representation of the same ion or molecule, but just the electrons are in different places. This is where we start calling delocalized electrons. So if you have a resident structure, you have this idea that you have delocalized electrons. If a electron is local, right, it stays local. It doesn't roam around. But if you have delocalized electrons, those electrons are able to move to different atoms. And the the reason why some molecules have resonance structures is if you have multiple elements 
and you have multiple bonds. Now in this case, right, I put the double bond up top here, but I could have also put the double bond down here, right? That was a choice. And I also could have put the double bond down here. The only reason why, because it's the same element all throughout. So because I chose to put the double bond up here, but in reality, you could have different representations. You have to draw that. You got to be fair. <laughs> My saying on the channel, you got to be fair, right? I say it all the time in math and in, in uh, chemistry. So when we're showing residence structures, we draw these double arrows. So we have two double arrows because I have to draw the one representation of putting the double bond here. And then I have to draw the one representation of putting the double bond here. So we'll start off with that. So we have carbon in the middle. We're going to put the double bond here now, single and single carbon in the middle. I'll put the double bond here, single and single. Now, when you're swapping them, you're swapping the placements as well, if you think of it in your mind. So the double bond always goes with the carbon with two lone pairs. The single bonds go with the, sorry, did I say carbon? I meant sulfur. Let's try that again. <laughs> the double bond goes with the sulfur with two lone pairs. But the single bond ones always goes with the sulfur with three lone pairs. Same thing over here. Here's the single bond. The sulfur had three lone pairs. So you just have to watch out for that as well. So this sulfur, if I draw it over on this compound, the sulfur with the two lone pairs has to go here. And then the other ones will have to go where the single bonds are. So just be careful about that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put S, S, S. And now it just basically follows the octet. So that's why you have to have the three lone pairs for the, the single bond ones, because that's the octet. You got to do it again down here. And now this one has the two. We'll do it on the other side. Sulfur is all around the three pairs of electrons go with the single bond. Single it up. And now double. There you go. And just like the other one, right, since we had a charge, we have to put a two minus here. And let's do the same thing for the other one. I'm just going to move this a little bit. Maybe I'll move this a little bit. There we go. Now, what you also can do if you don't want to bracket each one, uh, you should be fine with bracketing the whole thing and just putting a two minus in there. But I like to bracket every one of them just to kind of hold them together. And that's the answer. This whole shebang is the whole deal. So we got those electron structures, the Lewis structures, and the resonance for this. So there's three resonance structures. And just know that the more resonance structures a compound has, the more stable it is. This is going to be super important when you guys get to organic chemistry, if, you, if you're on that track, which I love organic chemistry. Um, so maybe we'll put more um, videos on the channel for orgo, but we'll see. But anyway, I hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Tell your friends, tell your classmates about this channel. It just gets the word out there that this, you know, YouTube channel exists. Thank you for your support. And I'll talk to you in the next lesson. Have an awesome, awesome day. Bye-bye.